over 65. There's been a large rise in the over 90s. Uh, we'll put the question boldly, is an ageing population a good thing? The demographer and author, Dr Paul Morland, is here, as is the editor of the Oldie Harry Mount. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to you both. Um, Paul, we know it's a good thing. The, the fact we've got an older population means people are living longer. Rejoice, therefore. But there are downsides. If you've got an older population, that sort of cohort of young men and women who are energetic and ambitious and keen to leave their mark on the world, take risks in business, that sort of thing, there are fewer of them. It's a good thing that we are living longer and nobody wants to die tomorrow, or very few of us anyway. Um, and so it's a result of a good thing that we have more older people. But the fact that people are living longer doesn't necessitate them having fewer children. So we could have longer life expectancy and yet have more kids. And with all these wonderful older people we have around, we do need more doctors, we need more nurses, we need more people in the healthcare services. Uh, as the population grows generally, we need more workers in all fields. And a, gr a rising older population means that there are fewer workers relative to the population as a whole. And it also puts a lot of strain on the state. The state is expected to do more and more, as we know. And the state has to do that more and more, whether it's in healthcare or in pensions, from an ever-shrinking, or at least not growing, base of taxpayers. Harry, people don't care about the pyramid. The pyramid of, you know, the inverted pyramid, which is like this. There we go. Look, there, I'm doing my own graphics now here on GB News. There you go. The inverted pyramid, with the taxpayers on the bottom and the old folk on the top, and the pyramid is going more and more like that, rather than more and more like that. They, they, does that enlighten anybody? Yes, no, it does. It Thank enlightens you. me, yes. <laughs> uh, and all, but also, most of those old people have worked very hard throughout their life as well. And um, on a more general point, I'd say, I would say this, because I'm editor of the Oldie magazine, the average age of our readers is um, 68. But the, um, hopefully this information will lead to a greater respect for and interest in the old, uh, partly because of my job, I spend a lot of time with older people. And it's, it's, it's a great joy. They, they know more stuff. One of the great joys about editing the Oldie is when, if I'm uh, commissioning an article on, say, Tony Hancock, you don't have to say Tony Hancock, the famous comedian who died in 1968. <laughs> the readers will know that already. And another great joy about being among the old people is they're relatively unshockable. We, we hold these regular literary lunches. And I've never, ever, ever had a complaint in five years of doing this job from an old person to someone saying something that was outrageous or politically incorrect. And I think there's a thing which was first enshrined by my predecessor, Richard Ingrams, who founded the Oldie in 1992, 30 years ago, is that the old have often been ignored by advertisers and the media because they're always obsessed with the young. But actually, the old have the money and they have the time, and now there are many more of them. So I hope this news will lead to a greater interest in the old. Mm -hmm.